Hurricane Fiona is on the move after hammering Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Turks and Caicos. That storm has now strengthened to a powerful Category 4 hurricane. It killed at least four people while carving a path of destruction through the Caribbean and much of that destruction in Puerto Rico. For more on how the island is holding up, uh, well, let's bring in Jennifer Gonzalez, Puerto Rico's sole representative in the United States Congress. Thank you very much for being with us, Representative Gonzalez. So uh, tell us about the situation on the island and, and what people need right now after this yet another storm blew through. I think the most important thing right now is that 80% of the island is still without power. And that means uh, that they cre that creates a real emergency when you cannot pump water in many of the communities. Uh, at least half half of the uh, of the people of the island are without water as well because of the lack of power. Um, the, the the soil and the terrain is so saturated by water that many roads are just collapsed uh, even today. Uh, there's some videos about bridges that were washed away by by the force of the water and rivers. Um, I, I understand that today they found another person uh, to pass away uh, because their car just were washed away by the river and they just found it today with the people inside. Um, so, so I think, you know, the people of the island are really desperate to know when the power grid is going to be restored. That's, that should be our main priority. We're waiting for uh, the White House, uh, uh, the president, for the official declaration of, uh, of emergency. Uh, the governor of Puerto Rico submitted uh, and requested that yesterday. So we are expecting uh, in the next hours and days to have that approval. That would allow FEMA uh, to actually open door for public assistance and individual mm -hmm. assistance for, for the people that lost their houses. Many, more than uh, a thousand uh, people uh, are just still uh, in shelters uh, mm -hmm. and many of them uh, lost their, their houses. And this, this comes... Five years uh, after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in 2017, that devastating storm. Uh, this one, obviously, not as bad, but people are still recovering and the, the island still coming back from Maria. How's the infrastructure holding up uh, from, from Fiona? I, I understand that uh, the, the mental health, you know, the fatigue, of remembering all those things that happened after the hurricane uh, Maria, when people on the island were almost were almost nine months without power, is something that you know still in the minds of Puerto Ricans as, as we speak. Uh, so right now, uh, the main issues are as just as I just said, uh, power uh, for hospitals that are functioning uh, with generators. Uh, some of them in the metropolitan area, they just get uh, their power back. Uh, but again, roads are very saturated. Some of them collapse. Uh, so there are many, a lot of mudslides in the center part of the island as well. So this here again was a little bit, dis, uh, you know, distant from 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 Maria where the whole island was impacted. And the, now in, in this hurricane Fiona, which was a category one, uh, when it, it makes uh, the landfall on the island, uh, heated hardly the south uh, and southwestern part of the island, as well as the center part of the island as well. And after Maria, uh, as I'm sure you remember, the, the struggle and the suffering of the, of the people of Puerto Rico became a political football, right? There was this, uh, the, the White House under then-President Trump, you yeah, complained about about assisting Puerto Rico. There's a report out that the president wanted to trade Puerto Rico for Greenland, if that's uh, if that's to be believed. But I just wonder about the response this time, and 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 how Puerto Rico is responding. Last time, the president, vice president, and cabinet members were on the island. And I'm grateful that Congress and president approved uh, billions of dollars in funding uh, for the island after the hurricane. Uh, but even the general accounting office identified that FEMA was not prepared to handle uh, a disaster like Hurricane Maria at that time. And there are many reports on that. So now I think the lessons are being learned. Uh, FEMA is on the ground with boots on the ground. They're still waiting for the official declaration of emergency from the president to actually um, begin uh, the process of assessment of, of the damages and help directly the people. So we're still, you know, facing a lot of the damage from Hurricane Maria. Uh, our power grid is is not robust. Uh, actually, we were having outages before the hurricane uh, at least every week. Uh, so we we approved 11.5 billion dollars just for the electrical grid on the island um, uh, during Hurricane Maria, and that money is not being used yet. 
Um, mm. So we expect uh, so we expect that many of the projects and public uh, uh, assistance that was approved uh, is it, supposed to begin early next year. Well, may, may I follow up on that? Because one of the other things that was found wanting was the response of Puerto Rican authorities on the ground in some ways that, that, that the infrastructure had been let uh, go to such a degree that the island was so much more vulnerable to Maria. How, how are the authorities responding this time? How, how do you think the, the, the authorities in Puerto Rico are dealing with this crisis? I think it's a completely different management of, of the of the crisis. The governor has been has been very active, uh, and again, the lessons are being learned after Hurricane Maria. So all the local agencies and federal agencies actually work as a team uh, to make things happen. The Army Corps of Engineers has been on the island, boots on the ground, uh, as well as the Coast Guard and many other uh, federal agencies. So, so I'll, 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 I'll say. You know, Maria was a completely different story. No power, no water, no uh, telecom at all. It was a state of mm. war. Uh, it was a category five. This one is category one, a lot of impact uh, in, in rivers and flooding. Um, again, the many lives that were lost uh, during uh, Maria and this one, we got people that, that passed away, but still uh, never the numbers of Hurricane Maria. So I understand that uh, uh, it's been just three, four days after the hurricane. Uh, I think the governor is doing a great job and federal agencies and are working. We are working as a team and the people of Puerto Rico just need that kind of team effort as we mm. speak. Absolutely. We hope they get it. Representative Jennifer Gonzalez, thanks very much for being with us. Good luck to you and to all the, uh, the people, our Thank fellow you. Americans in Puerto Rico. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.